Hello everyone, welcome back to Hexen James has left some time ago, uh, about a week ago. It's been a while since I played. Uh, I did skip the bit. <laughs> okay, so I couldn't remember what I was doing, so I skipped... I watched the episode that I recorded with James in order to remember that I had to skip a bit. Uh, yeah, good times. So we were... we picked up several keys. Now is there a place we have yet to go? I think not in here. I'm trying to think where we might have to go next. Let's have a look at our progress. Or progress. Up here. This is not the right way. As you well know. Simply use this elevator here. I have a feeling that face on the wall does something. Uh, I could be wrong. I feel like it should open. We need to go to the caves level again. But that's it, we've got five of six, so that's pretty good. Oh, hello. Why don't we go back there? Which is this way. Uh, yes, blue mana is useful right now. Green mana, so I had um, a comment from our favorite commenter, 42% health, who says they feel like the cleric's third weapon, the green mana weapon, the firestorm, is uh, sort of an experiment that doesn't seem to work in context of Hexen. And I, I've used it a little bit and I tend to agree. It has an explosive effect when it hits uh, an enemy, which means that it really benefits when there are several enemies, you know, within range of that one enemy. That. So, since that's fairly rarely the case in Hexen, at least. It is on other difficulty levels. We will see. There is a good chance that it turns out to be extremely important on this difficulty level. Now, there's a door. If we can find it. Which will open. It's in one of these uh, courtyard type areas. Which one, though? I guess we just go looking. Ooh, don't step on that. Um... On hard mode, it may be that enemies are often tightly clustered in a, in a way that makes the Firestorm a uh, sensible option. Not through there. That remains to be seen. I, I don't necessarily give that idea too much credit having been playing with Firestorm a little bit. I mean, we saw it... Uh, they did note that against Centaurs it is completely useless because they get hit by the original shot and then basically deflect the entirety of the, um, the shield against the majority of the damage, which is the explosion. So using it against centaurs is definitely not a good idea, but maybe using it against things like Afrits, um, groups of Etins, anything that doesn't have a shield, basically, um, might not do too badly. This is the other side of the door I'm thinking of. So we need to find... There's one of these which has the castle key logo on it. Which means you use the castle key because they didn't really make things particularly difficult for us in old games. There's that bridge, so we need to get in there. Let's just uh, wander around and have nothing to talk about. What have I been doing? I've just not been playing games, really. I've been practicing my Left for Dead. Left for Dead 2, in fact. Which I think is a very worthwhile way of spending time. Uh, hoping to play it a little bit on camera at some point, or maybe on stream. Uh, let me know what you think about that idea. I'm also thinking of streaming some more RimWorld, which I haven't played for some time. And then these games, I, sh I should really play them like solo, offline sort of thing. We are walking around in circles right here. Just to keep in practice, but when I'm playing offline, I'm going to be playing Fallout, basically. Our Fallout series was a bit of a non-starter. It's not that it was a bad series per se, it's just that I didn't really feel like it was that easy to play on camera. Let's try this way. Oh, that's back here again. Look. You probably know exactly where I should be going, so feel free to like, tell me. Sort of go back in time, watch what I'm doing, tell me in the comments of the previous video where I'm supposed to go in this video, and then I can read them. Let's have a, let's have a, pro uh, let's have a proper look here. That's some nice base work there, do you hear that? That doesn't sound good. Uh, so if we have a look... Plus? Yes. If we have a look over here, you can see where the stairs are right in the middle now. Which is surely the way in. Which means we want to go in there. 
and then in here. Hello. I'm very lost. <laughs> what do I do? But we can't get in here. Which means there's another door somewhere. There's definitely something that uses the castle key here, is there not? Someone? Anyone? This is where I need chat. Oh, there's that thing down there. Did that use the castle key? That might have been it. So we need to get in there. I honestly can't remember how. That's very annoying. We could run around this until we're blue in the face, couldn't we? This is where Hexen really sort of... It doesn't really get... I don't want to say it gets dreary. Um, it's not a drudge at this stage, although it might be a little bit less interesting to watch me run around like an idiot. But it becomes a different game, especially from games like Doom, which everyone's used to. Um, in that now you're in this position where the, you're going, there must be something I've missed. I know there's something I've missed. <clears throat> what is it and where is it? In Doom, it's just, you know, you need the blue key. Go and find the blue key. It's on this level. You know that much in Doom. Not so here. We found that one. In Hexen, it could literally be anywhere. It could be in any of the three levels we've already found. Or indeed, it could be in a completely different level. Part of me is reasonably sure that it is in this level. Which is not a huge part of me and not a huge amount of surety. So you can imagine that at this stage, I am feeling a little bit... Uh, maybe that I could do with some guidance from the gods? What does this do? Right, so that's what... Oh, Christ! Quick, get it out! Uh, that's what she said. Um, that was interesting. Because, um... Those Africs right in front of us. Get some health out of this one. So, this... Probably we should have used that teleporter very early on. I was right about this being the castle key, so... I must have just been merging memories of the last time I played the game with, you know, memories of this playthrough and therefore getting hella confused. Now, this is going to be horrible, isn't it? <coughs> and six of the puzzle has been solved on the Shadow Wood. Might as well take this HP, we're not coming back. Not that it makes a huge amount of difference, but we'll... <coughs> We'll take our leave. Alright, well, we found it. I honestly did not consider that it would be that teleporter until I went, ooh, maybe this teleporter is it. Obviously, we should use that teleporter the first time we went through that portal. But no harm, no foul, I guess. No need to get the hell out of here. We'll go in this one. Why not? This is whole building built for us just to house this portal. We might as well you know, take advantage of that. Uh, now we can go through here and jump in the other portal. Presumably the purpose of this portal is to allow you to get back again. Nice and quickly. Where is it? <laughs> no, it is this way. What are you doing? Go down here. Into here. There is a baddie in that water. <laughs> For some value of water. Um, baddie in that game. I will avoid it. Ta-da! Okay. We have solved all six parts of this puzzle more HP that we don't actually need, which is great because it means we're doing well. And we will head yonder. Now, we obviously, we zoned a couple of times, so I don't need to save Scummit. We'll pick up this mana. Gratefully received. So it's another one of those... Um, in the Seven Portals, the final mission of the... of the hub was laid out in front of you at the end of it. Ooh, terrible timing. So, what was happening there? You may be wondering. What the hell is wrong with you? Good question. Um, I was trying to drain its health. Didn't really work. As you can no doubt notice. Yeah, this would have, like, we solved the puzzle, we, we go through here. No. Uh, this is not the Seven Portals. Does that take us back? Yes. I like the music in this bit. No, this is a... It's an extra level. It's a sort of a... Boss area. Of, it does have a few extra puzzles to solve before we get to the boss area, so... We'll endeavour to not be dead when we get there. This 
may be one of those situations where you have to kill everything before anything opens. Again, I can't stress enough how... Uh, it's sort of uh, an impressiveness of nostalgia. I don't really have a word for such a feeling, but... You, you take how impressed you are and you multiply it by how long ago the thing that you're impressed by was made. Being able to have this level of scripting, I'm saving my blue minor in case you're wondering, because it's going to get hard. Um, this level of scripting was brand new. How many, I was going to say, how many levels in Doom did you have to kill everything to, you know, unlock the next level, the next part of? I believe, in fact, in Doom it was possible to flag an area as requiring everything to be dead. Or maybe it would, like, if you ever actually did play the original Doom, you'll know that at the end of the first episode, much like at the end of Doom 3, you thought the uh, Cyber Demon, just one of them, luckily, uh, having killed it, you were able to uh, progress. This is bad. Don't die. I believe either it was specially labelled as the thing you had to kill, so this is the boss, and then... Ooh, hello. Uh, stuff happens. And also the stuff that could happen as a result of killing the Cyberdemon was ah, highly limited. So I don't know where these came from, but I'm not pleased with it. Um, if you... Actually, that's not true at all, is it? At the end of the first episode of Doom 1, you face two Barons of Hell. Yeah, this is open now. More Wraith Verge. Uh, which you have to beat... And then you jump into, uh, you go down a staircase, basically. Uh, whereupon you get teleported into a black room and you get ripped apart by imps. Uh, which you cannot avoid. Which I actually thought was pretty cool. That was a very interesting part of Doom. Was that, uh, and of course, you know, a little bit inside baseball, you go behind the scenes and you have a look how it's done. And the teleporter is specifically designed to end the level when you reach 20% health. So you can die, you can get basically killed in there. Uh, the, it's the, I just got pushed forwards. That's very excellent. Yeah, the teleporter would um, let you, it would end the level when you got to 20% health, which is basically the extent of scripting. And even then, you can't call it scripting in my opinion. Um, and the reason I say that, Oh god, help. Just keep this thing at bay and it'll be fine. Uh, the reason I don't think it's called scripting necessarily is that it doesn't rely on any external factors being completed, if you see what I mean. The, there's only one player, so it doesn't matter which player you're talking about. You know, you don't have to flag more than one thing as requiring to be in a certain situation. Um, and the thing that happens is, you know, not negotiable. Where, I mean, it's difficult to be honest about what you think a, a script would be. Oh god, what's going to happen? More of them, Jesus Christ. Um, but just saying, if you're in this sector, then the level ends when you get to 20% health. Doesn't feel like it has some of the hallmarks of scripting. I mean, it's true of uh, many things in Hexen, like you would not consider that the speed at which an elevator moves is a script. You would consider the fact that you have to pull several switches, not necessarily in the right order, or that when you pull a, a switch in this level, something happens in that level, or maybe some randomness is introduced. Um, the, the, the traps, for example, are very much scripted because of the randomness that they have. Oh, there's three, are there? Okay. Well, I'm going to have to keep talking about scripting for now. Oh, no, okay. Can attempt to save there. Seems a bit save scummy, but at the same time... This, by the way, just points to the... Hello. To the next open door. I will save scum it when we've completed all these three. Because although the boss is not that difficult, the boss is not that easy, and I've never played the boss on hard mode. Hard mode. You know what? Screw this. Die. Die, die, die. Good. 
We will use these for this. This for these. I like having the lighting effects. It really gives you a better idea of what's going on. See, these are nice and close together, so we should be able to get value out of the explosive effect of it. I'm pretty sure it travels along the floor and up the wall. So be irrespective of, <laughs> of the fact that there is a massive pillar in the way. Could be wrong. Uh, it doesn't appear to be having quite the desired effect. Uh, yeah, just walks full tilt into that, no props. Uh, uh, help, help, help. Use this. Don't be scared. Oh, shit. Just keep spamming it. Keep spamming it. Right, good. How are you not dead? We've had so much good value out of finding crystal vials that I honestly think that this is the exact sort of situation. You should be saving them. Oh my god, that just hit me in one shot. A sip of tea, and we continue. Uh, I will cut this bit out and see you on the other side. Oh my god, help. I'm back. I used way more mana this time because to hell with it. There seems to be plenty around. Um, but it's not been easy. I did save scum it. I <laughs> couldn't do it again. To hell with you all. Uh, because it's just a little bit boring to have to redo it, I guess, is the problem there. Uh, there's a button that's popped up as a result of that button, which kind of tells me... It's like, that's what I was saying about scripting, right? Uh, that's, that's a very good embodiment of the concept. That button popped up because of another button, and then you could do that in Doom originally. I love the fact that it kicks forward sides. Um, you could have done that in Doom, but didn't have enough parameters in a game like Doom to not only say, you know, turn this, uh, lift this switch when I press this switch, but you couldn't also say, and then allow it to be used, because in Doom, if that switch had been there, you could have just pressed the switch, even though you couldn't see it. It doesn't really count as scripting at all, because it's not real. This may be scripted as well, I'm not quite sure. You see that, um, that shape there? We have to go over there and press the same one. Now... I'm not sure whether that's randomly selected when the level is spawned. It could be. But these two do something else if you press them. Which, again, you could set up something like that in a game like Doom. You could have a special type of event that occurs when... I guess the difference between scripting and non-scripting is whether you've set it up in advance. Does that make sense? Um, for example... In a game like Doom, if you press a button, like a, a switch on the wall, and a door opens, then you can bind the wall that is, you can bind the thing that is the, the door, the sector that is the door, to the switch and say, when I press the switch, you open that door. Or you bring that lift down, or when I step across this line, the lift goes up. Things like that. Uh, which I, I guess are forms of scripts. And you can tell the lift how fast to go. Well, that's an interesting thing as well, because, of course, uh, <laughs> these doors kicking me inwards. Very intimidating, I have to be honest. Um, squish it, then. Oh, fine. But when you have a game that allows scripting, or like Hexen, you don't just bind the, the side to the lift sector and say, when I cross this, move the lift. You can, and much of Hexen is done exactly like that because it's basically cognitively cheaper for a computer to deal with. Um, but so much of it is more a case of, when I press this, run this whole script. Uh, which could then specify various things to do various different things, and you can tell the thing from outside what speed to go at, for example. Uh, and just randomise it. Like this piece of crap here, which won't apparently let me get off the lift. I can jump, so maybe I should. Um, so, in a game that allows scripting, you can not only take advantage of the built-in things, you can write your own things. I guess that's the difference. And it's interesting that in Doom, you are constrained to two speeds. Ooh, hello. Two speeds of door, and two speeds of lift, two speeds of stair. In fact, there was a 
there is a function in Doom that says make stairs and you set up the sectors that will be the rises of the stair or the, the, the flat of the stair. What's the actual flat of the stair called? Answers in the comments please. Um, and it will build the stair and it, you, you tell it what pixel value the rises should be and it will just do it. You have to set it up in advance. It's true in Uh But I'm going to save now. <laughs> I'm scared. Uh, you didn't get the opportunity to do things like... Oh, jeez. Alter... Like, pick a speed. You couldn't set multiple things going at randomly different speeds. This is the Wyvern, I believe. I think we can go around the other way as well. So we should maybe take out some more enemies before we try and face the boss. Now, if we do this right... If we do this right... Hello! We can... Oh, I shouldn't really be using green, uh, blue mana things. I'm going to need that quite a lot for my... Uh, for my wyvern fight. Actually, this does quite a lot of damage if you hit with it. What I'm currently concerned about with my firestorm mm -hmm. is that I don't know when I'm hitting with it. It's not like they have the crosshair blink or a little beep when you hit something like modern uh, you're bad at shooting shooter games. Okay, auto aim and shit like that. What happened just now? We'll use this. So... I feel like it does a ton of damage as long as I hit with it. Which is... Oh, easy to happen, but... It seems to get caught on things. It seems to have a wider beam than it... I uh, uh, seem to believe that it does. Okay. Also, it has a limited range. I think that might have been what 42% um, health is telling me. Oh, God, something spawned in. Now, here's what we're going to do. We're going to wake the Wyvern... See, it has a fairly instant travel time, but... Wow, they spread. I didn't realise that. Clary's a pretty bad character, all in all. We're going to wake the Wyvern, because we're going to have to, because we're going to go there. Yep, yeah, that's not that horrible scary noises. But what we're going to do is we're going to keep moving. Oh, shit. We're going to kill this, and then we're going to try and get the Wings of Wrath. We're going to switch to them. We're going to use them. We're going to kill the Wyvern from above. We're also going to let these bastards do some damage to it, apparently. Yeah, kill them for me. Wyvern is currently focusing on me. I was going to say on them. It's no longer the case. We will use this to get rid of you. Very good. This. Is it dead? Right, they're all dead. The nice thing about this OpenGL version of the game is that at least you can look up and down and change the direction you're flying. That actually really helps. The controls for flying in the original version in the era... Well, well yeah, the original version. So cumbersome. Bear in mind that you'd be using the arrow keys to rotate your view. This has to turn out much better than the um, the staff would have been. That has to turn out to be really easy. Um, that's probably the easiest part of the level, believe it or not. There's the Wyvern's little nest here. Nothing to see here. Um, now we need a lot of mana, which is a shame. We've also got our Wings of Wrath permanently. I don't know how to turn them off. Like, I, I mean, I know now that... Oh, I've got very little health, somehow. I know now that they are supposed to last indefinitely, but I feel like there should be a way of disactivating them so I can walk, basically. We might as well pick up all the health, all the mana, and didn't use the flechettes because they suck. Pick up the mana, yes, yes, yes. Just ignore that. What the hell's the problem? Who needs it? Ain't nobody got time for that. Uh, and I think... That seems like a good point to... Think about ending the episode. I remember that at the end of the last, at the end of the seven portals, I started the next episode just as we zoned. So I think I'll do the same here. The killing of the wyvern, much like the killing of the cyber demon, has opened this portal here. Where are you? Don't make a liar out of me. That one in there. So that's the exit. You can tell it's a slightly different colour. I've actually never noticed that before. We have full health. Excellent. So I'm going to go and explore a little bit. Try and get my mana back up to full. And then I'm going to come back here. And at the start of the next episode, we will be standing approximately here. About to go into the next level. So thank you for watching. I really appreciate all the comments that you are giving me. Um, all the advice, information, everything that you've got is invaluable. Uh, it really helps, like... 
morale wise just to know that people are watching it's, it's uh, very gratifying to know that the series is even remotely popular but to be as popular as it is which is you know on the grand scheme of things not that popular and that's a lot you know try and be a, a big head about it um yeah again thank you very much for watching and do keep watching and come back in the next episode for the next episode i guess see you then <laughs>